In reality, the event that has occurred over the past 10 days that everyone is freaking out over, which is a decrease from 47,000 to 38,000, has absolutely nothing to do with the sale of GBT. It has absolutely nothing to do with folks going into a panic. The dynamics of supply and demand are pretty plain straightforward. In addition to the typical sales that take place during this time of year every year, there is also the preparation for the Lunar New Year. As a result, the Chinese sell a great deal in order to stuff the red envelopes with cash. When they have another one that takes place immediately before tax time in the United States, it is considered to be usual. The second reason is that you were able to liquidate the billion dollars worth of GBTC that was held by X. The expectations that were held over the past couple of weeks have been completely thrown off as a result of the SEC's historic approval of 11 spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds. Despite the fact that many people looked forward to immediate price increases, the reality has been quite different. Bitcoin reached a two year high on the first day of trading when it reached $49,000 per coin. However, almost immediately after that, it saw a severe reversal, which sent it back down to its previous level. It fell below $39,000 for the first time in about half a month, which prompted extensive discussion regarding the factors that led to the decline in value. The fall can be attributed to GBTC, according to Eric Bynes, a senior analyst at Bloomberg Equities, on the other hand, the well-known hedge fund manager, Mark Yusso, offers an extremely different point of view. According to Yusso, a sizable percentage of the money that is being transferred out of GBTC is being transferred into other Bitcoin exchange traded funds, which helps to reduce the actual losses. He is of the opinion that the outflows are likely to decrease in the near future, particularly due to the fact that investors who are leaving GBTC are predominantly paying taxes and using accounts, which helps to mitigate the impact of excessive costs. The observations made by Yuzo spark conversations on the prospects for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in the future. A recent interview with the Threat Warrior Academy allowed him to go into the elements that have been driving the recent price changes, as well as his hopes for the cryptocurrency market going forward, and the increasing position that exchange-traded funds at play in this ecosystem. Freed from lockdown, however, it did not. The reason for this is because Vanguard, Abuse, and Merrill, as well as Bank of America, have all stated that you are not permitted to purchase it. Isn't that money that I got? Those assets that you have in your brokerage account, aren't they mine? As a result, I really hope that everyone runs away from Vanguard, Ubs, and Merrill, because that is a bad move. It belongs to us. Are you telling me that I am unable to purchase this? Consequently, it is not going to take place overnight. And let's imagine that in a year's time, those models such as the Merrill model and the UB's model cite one. Put that out of your mind. Let's assume you do 10 basis points or 20 basis points. Demand ranges anywhere from 30 to $60 billion. If you move the aggregate demand curve, you will find that PON, which is the point where supply and demand cross, is greater than P2, which is P0. The price goes up when PON goes higher. In that case, you are in for a supply shock. It is not difficult to understand the supply shock. The idea that you could cut the block rewards in half was, in my opinion, one of the most brilliant engineering coding ideas that has ever been proposed. This is a really significant assertion, but let me tell you what it is. Indeed, we have discussed this topic in the past. Furthermore, it is a little bit sexist. What exactly is it though? The thing is as follows. The benefits for the block are slashed in half by you. Then what takes place? Due to the fact that their expenses are set, 50% of the miners would be out of business if the price did not increase. As a result, the price begins to go up. That being said, as the price continues to grow, we guys are wearing Hunter in our pants. I would definitely stare at the person that walked past my office. We are thrilled by anything that moves. If it is not moving, then we are unable to observe it. The ketchup tale has already been told to you. My wife will tell you to fetch some ketchup. I am the one who opens the door. Please, there is no ketchup in this. It's not moving at all. Neither can I see it. Since the majority of merchants are male, the price begins to rise and the traders begin purchasing it. This is because the most of traders are male. This results in an increase in the number. As a result, the fair value increased by a factor of two. As of right now, the worth of Bitcoin is approximately $50. 
we end up being close to 100. And suppose we live in a world where there are no transaction costs. Additionally, inscriptions and ordinals are contributing to an increase in transaction fees. Then perhaps we won't move from 50 to 100. On the other hand, let's assume that we go from 50 to 80 for fair value. In addition, Tim Peterson possesses a wonderful model of Metcalfe's law that is able to provide you with that amount. At the age of 40, we are significantly below the age of 80. As a result, the numbers are going to start climbing near 80. On the other hand, what is going to take place is that you are going to experience this demand shock in addition to the initial demand shock, which is the fear of missing out FOMO. The merchants are set to arrive at any moment. The numbers are going to move in according to them. When that happens, the gamblers and the speculators enter the picture. After that, they begin to increase their leverage. Since this is the case, we are currently experiencing the summer of cryptocurrency. The month of June marks the beginning of crypto autumn. These ridiculous gatherings take place throughout the period from June to June, just following the halving of the population. The average amount that we go up to is 2.3 times the fair value. So the fair value was 30 the last time. Here we are at 69. It is my opinion that we will not move to 2.3 this time. I believe that we do not have as much leverage within the system as we thought we did. Consequently, let us assume that we go to, if we are to be conservative, go one and a half. Assuming that the fair value is 80, we will proceed to 130, 150, or someplace in that region. And it is going to take place. And when it happens, the fear of missing out FOMO attract a lot of people who are not very strong. When that happens, the bubble will eventually burst and we will be faced with yet another bear market. Then again, that is a year from today. You are, to the fullest extent, antithetical to what Bitcoin is supposed to be if you own Bitcoin through a centralized company such as Coinbase, Gemini, or in a TTF wrapper. Both your ledger and your cold wallet are the places where you should keep your Bitcoin. Is it not the case that you are intended to own it and force it out of my icy, lifeless hands? The decentralized system is superior. I concur with you. But let me tell you something, the technology is not yet at its full potential. Furthermore, in the sense that it is flawless in the sense that it functions, it is also complicated. To add insult to injury, there are individuals who misplace their keys or forget their password. You know, things do take place. Now, we are not going to transition from traditional finance, in which everything is centralized and managed by large banks, to decentralized finance overnight. Our time together is going to be a CF5 time, and this is exactly what has been taking place. Are you familiar with Coinbase, Cash App, Strike, and Jack Maulers? C5 eventually. Everyone will be using the DeFi protocol. This, are you? What is it? 25, 30, 40? Amazing. How old is my father? 85. I will never be able to handle his keys. By no means, I will not be holding his keys in my hands. I am in a precarious situation if I am unable to retrieve them. Coinbase is going to be his platform of choice, and he is going to be centralized. This morning, I had breakfast with a friend of mine. Hey, should I just buy the exchange traded fund? He asks. Actually, you ought to. It would be more convenient for you, a 65-year-old man, to just purchase the exchange traded fund as I do not wish to explain to you how to acquire a ledger and how to keep your seed word. However, this does not result in the system being more centralized. Oh, in the same vein as Max Kaiser, everyone is saying it appears that they are going to confiscate all of those Bitcoins. Okay, so let's assume that this will take place. 